What's up, everyone? Welcome to this name, Philly Sports History for September 22nd, 2024. I'm your host, Jim Montgomery. Welcome to a Sunday edition of the podcast, Eagles Game Day. Huge day in Philly sports, so let's get right into it. First, let's do some housekeeping. Follow me on social media, Jimbo underscore Mont, Twitter and TikTok, at Philly Jimbo on Instagram. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, Jimbo underscore Mont, even if you're listening to it on a podcast. Spread the word. If you're enjoying it, let somebody else know. And if you're enjoying it, likely they'll enjoy it too. So spread the word. Jimbo underscore Mont on YouTube. That's the best way to stay in the loop. Then be sure to check out my boys over at the Clash and Conferences podcast, doing great things for both baseball and football. That is available wherever you get your podcasts as well as on YouTube. And then it's a red October. Go to Philly Goat. Get your Phillies gear. Get ready. Get or, uh, Phillied up. You can get eagled up, flyered up, sixered up, whatever you want. Union up if you want. Go to Philly Goat. They have the Phillies Believe shirt. That's kind of like the tribute to Ted Lasso that the players were wearing on the field last year. Got my daughter one. Go get your Believe shirt. Of course, the Go Phils, which as Ryan and the Philly Goat team say, the stupidest shirt they've ever made, but it's amazing. So go to Philly Goat. Use the promo code Jim Montgomery for 10% off your order. They also have your Phillies election coverage all taken care of. So go check them out. See what they got going on over there. Use that promo code Jim Montgomery to take 10% off of your order. All right, let's recap the question of the day. I asked you yesterday, what were your thoughts on Joe's contract extension? 71% of you agreed with me and said it was a good thing. Again, I mean, it's more of a formality than anything, but I think it really hammers home the fact that there's like a two, three-year window right now for them to win a championship. Keeps the big guy happy. One of the all-time greats in Sixers history who likely will play the majority, uh, the meaningful years of his career anyway. Who knows what happens near the end. Uh, but the most meaningful years of his career will be spent with the Sixers, and I'm all for it. Thank you, as always, for participating in the question of the day. 267-495-8531 is the Back to the Future voice and text line. Answer the question of the day. Get anything else Philly sports-related off of your chest. Uh, this thing has started to blow up in the past couple of weeks, so let's continue that momentum as well. We'll be asking you about the Eagles later in the show. All right, let's start with the Phillies. Is today the day they win the division? I, I think so. Uh, yesterday, 6-3 loss. And I think what's important to keep in mind is yesterday's game was far more important to the Mets than it was to the Phillies. And I think the Phillies at this point are just navigating through. They know they're going to win the division. Uh, they look very, very likely that they're going to get one of those top two seeds as well. So the Mets are fighting for their lives. So this was a huge game for the Mets. Uh, not that the Phillies played that bad. I mean, Ranger was okay. He wasn't great. He wasn't good. I don't know if uh, it, it, we need to be concerned because for the most part, he was solid through three innings. The offense didn't necessarily give him that much help. Uh, but again, uh, Manaya has been lights out during this Mets hot streak. So it, it was way more important for them. I'm not concerned about yesterday's game. Uh, I, I think with Zach Wheeler on the mound today, they would like to just get the division thing out of the way and then sort of focus on the rest of the season. They have the Cubs, who have been not good lately, and then the Nationals. So let's get it done today. Would love to, as cool as it would be to win it tomorrow in Philly. Let's just win it today in New York because that's somewhat gratifying as well, winning it on their home field. Um, and, yeah, maybe that's just me being petty because it's the Mets, but uh, in, in a logistical standpoint, let's just get it over with. Get it over with, and then you, you sort of get your mindset right then for the playoffs as they go down. Magic number, again, to win the division is one. Uh, they now – have a four-game lead still on Milwaukee, and they're tied with the Dodgers, who both lost yesterday. So the magic number for that two seed is three. Uh, they can actually clinch that at some point early this week. And then the magic number for the number one seed due to the tiebreaker with the Dodgers is down to seven. So 
Big game coming today. Let's get it done. You got Zach Wheeler, your ace, former Met. I'm sure it'll be somewhat gratifying for him to win the division in his former home. Uh, so let's just do it today. Get it over with. Come on, Phils. And then we'll be dancing on our own. Pop the sh- bottles of champagne, which I did not buy yesterday. So t- you can't blame that one on me. Uh, but let's do it. And just start focusing then on a red October. Before we get into the Eagles, uh, the Savannah Bananas were at Citizens Bank Park yesterday. And I, I tried hard to get tickets for that. It was a difficult ticket to get. Uh, I tried hard through the lottery and everything. Uh, but if you're not familiar, the Savannah Bananas are essentially like the Harlem Globetrotters of uh, baseball. They kind of just travel around. It's a lot of fun. Uh, they had a lot of good surprises. I was kind of following it on Twitter last night as they were doing. Lots of fun surprises. Shane Victorino was there playing for the Bananas. Jamie Moyer pitched. They brought out Heavy B, Joe Blanton. Uh, very, very loud, roaring uh, ovations for those guys. And then, of course, the big piece came out. Uh, and it was just, the, I was very proud to be a Philly fan because of the ovation that Ryan Howard received. Uh, I talked about it earlier this week when we did uh, focus on Donovan McNabb. I feel Ryan Howard could be one of the most underappreciated, if not the most underappreciated athlete in Philly sports history. So it was good to see uh, the ovation and the love for the big piece. But it seemed like it was a fun time. Would have loved to have had tickets. If you were down there, call me on the Back to the Future voice and text line. Tell me about the experience because it seemed like it was a lot of fun. Uh, and like I said, they're like the, the globe trotters of baseball. All right. One last thing. I have to mention this. We haven't talked a lot about them other than that they suck really bad. Uh, but my Temple Owls with a 45-29 win yesterday over the Utah State. Uh, I think they're the Tigers or the Wildcats or let me actually look that up. I forget. Or the Aggies maybe. Either way, uh, great win for them. Uh, first win of the season. And yeah, they're the Aggies. And uh, it was very fun following that game uh, and just seeing them. I, I, I caught the very beginning of it. Uh, but a great win for my Owls over Utah State. And I have to mention this because Maddox Trujillo, I think that's his name, Hilo or Trujillo, set a record yesterday for Lincoln Financial Field. Temple's kicker right before the half. He had a 64-yarder, which is now the longest field goal ever hit at Lincoln Financial Field, which is pretty cool. Before it was 61, that one that, uh, uh, why can't I think of his name now? Our kicker for the Eagles hit again in the Giants game. Um, oh my gosh, my mind is 100% blank. Um, why can I not think of our kicker's name? Jake Elliott. Broke Jake Elliott's record. So shout out to Maddox for uh, setting the, the Lincoln Financial Field longest field goal record um, in my Temple Owls 45 29 win. Let's keep it rolling. I have that over two and a half wins bet. Uh, so they're now one and three. I need two more wins. Come on, Owls. Two more wins. You got to find two more wins. Take that momentum and, and keep it rolling. All right. It is Eagles game day. And currently, the line as of recording time was plus three. The over under is 49 and a half. And I think let's take a step back and do one last look at that Falcons game because I do think there are some positives to take away from that. The defense did only give up 15 points until the last drive. And yes, it was Kirk Cousins on one leg or whatever you want to say, but they gave up some big chunk yards. But just like the game against the Falcons, they were, or the Packers, they were able to make the stops when they needed. And until that last drive when they couldn't stop anybody, They gave up 15 points. So that is a positive there. Despite the fact they couldn't stop the run, despite the fact they had zero pass rush, they only had given up 15 points in that. And you got to expect your offense, as explosive as it is, is going to score more than 21. The other positive is Jalen Hurts looked solid until the last drive. I think they came into the game not really – the game plan all week, I'm sure, they were – expecting AJ who got hurt and had that hamstring tightness midweek in practice. So the game plan was already probably in place 
that they were going to have AJ. So maybe we can chalk that up. Uh, but again, the negatives still are outweighing the positives. Had something good happen on that last offensive drive or the defense had made a, a stop on the last defensive drive, we might be having a different conversation this week. So that's all positive. But the fact that those last drives happened, that Jalen once again made a, a horrible decision in a big moment, the fact that defense couldn't get out of their own way on that last drive, that is what was clouding everyone's judgment this week. Um, th this team is very close to being 2-0. and But at the same time, they're very close to being 0-2. Uh, so I, I would have to say they're fortunate right now to be 1-1. One and, one. and heading into this game with the eye test, I mean the Saints, if you just forget numbers, forget anything... The Saints have been rolling, and uh, the Saints should blow the Eagles out of this game. I mean, the Eagles are giving up uh, 160 rushing yards a game. The Saints are averaging 185. I, I fear that Alvin Kamara, thank God I'm not playing him in any fantasy games this week, is going to roll over. But everybody's talking about the, the Saints offense. They're averaging 40 points a game through two games, the, what, what they did to Dallas and all of that. But I think that... What people aren't talking about with the Saints is the defense, who's only given up 273 yards per game. Now, is that because of who they're playing? I mean, they, I think they played Carolina and Dallas. So is Dallas just not as good as everybody thinks, and which I think they're a dumpster fire waiting to ignite? Uh, we know the, the Panthers are just a horrible, horrible team. But the defense for the, the Saints has not been bad, and it's not like our offense has been uh, knocking whatever around. Like they're, They've had their own struggles and their own issues. So, like I said, the eye test is this game should be, should be a blowout for the Saints. I racked my brain this week, and again, Key Bank, any local – car dealerships you want to sponsor this segment hit me up but i have three keys to the game that if the eagles can do this they should be able to win this game and the first is probably the most important run the ball control the clock i i mean if jalen doesn't get to 200 yards passing today but they run the ball 30 35 40 times i think they're going to be in good shape i think you have allegedly and I'll, I'll put it in air quotes, the, the best O-line or one of the best O-lines in football, it's time to go out there and prove it. Go out there, dominate the Saints, because I, I'm not sure their defense is that good. I think it's more of a testament to how bad the Panthers and the Cowboys are. But go out there, pound the rock. I want to see a heavy dose of Saquon. I want to see Kenny Gamewell in there. Give me some... Jalen Hurts design runs whatever we need to do pound the rock it, it just put your will out there as the offensive line and, and open up the pass and for Jalen take what the defense is going to give you if that is Dallas Goddard is that if swing pass and be like hopefully with a better game plan that there was plays where if they played it right Devonte had whoever he was guard guard him last week on Atlanta had him deep so let's make smart decisions but it comes down to pounding the rock control the clock slow down the saints offense and kind of put them more in a uh, desperation mode and a hurry up mode where they're trying to push and, and, and do things and i mean it's the best way to neutralize an offense that likely is going to dominate your defense second key to the game speaking of that defense I just need everybody to, as Bill Belichick used to say, and I know that's a funny name this week to, to bring up, but Bill Belichick, Bill Belichick used to say, do your job. And that's what I need this defense to do. Guys on the end, contain. They, there was no containment last week, and that helped allow uh, and Bijan to, to have the, the, the yards that he did. And, I mean, that goes back to the Packers game, too. They, they, they didn't got contained. So contain the outside, keep everything, force it toward the middle. And then Jalen Carter and Jordan Davis, plug those gaps, eat up blockers, and let the linebackers make plays. Now, linebackers, I need you to make those plays. I need Zach Bond to go back to where he was in Brazil. 
I need N'Kobe Dean to figure it out. Prove that you're not a bust. Just do what you're supposed to do. Do your jobs. And then in the secondary, just good coverage. Uh, just cover your man. No breakdowns. Communicate. And basically, go back to the basics. And I know uh, Vic Fangio talked about this, but that's what I need from the defense. Do your job. Don't try to press. Don't try to do this. Allow the game to come to you. But as long as you're doing your job, they could, they should be okay because there, there were glimpses in that Packers game, and really for the three and then three quarters quarters against the Falcons, where they only gave up the 15 points. So it's there. I just need you to do your job. Specifically, the guys on the outside contain, can just contain, force it into the middle, and allow the guys that are supposed to tackle to make the tackles. But it all starts up front. And finally, get some turnovers. Listen, they've had one turnover this year. Uh, they, they're minus three on turnovers this year, but they, they've only had the one interception in Green Bay, or against Green Bay. Um, and th- that's an issue. And if you go back to 22, that's what, like, they were forcing turnovers. They had, uh, I don't know if they set the team record, but they had a ridiculous uh, turnover margin. And minus three through two games is not good, especially when you've only gotten one. So force some turnovers. Derek Carr is not Peyton Manning. Um, And go after the ball. Uh, Be aggressive, too. Like, especially the guys in the secondary. I know I just said do your job and have good coverage, but this is where the communication comes down. Quinion Mitchell, big play slay. Be aggressive. Make some big plays. That means whether or not C.J. Gardner-Johnson is playing today, who I believe is a game-time decision, should not matter. Be aggressive. Like, you need to – and I don't know if that means dial up some blitzes, Vic, um, but I, I think you got to be somewhat aggressive to force the, the, the ball. Go after the ball. Punch the ball. Uh, I was watching the Michigan game yesterday, and uh, Michigan just was trying to run out the clock, and USC guy came in and literally – Punch the ball out of the running back when he was in the pile. That's the kind of things I need to see. Jim Johnson's defenses used to do that all the time. We need to force turnovers. So those are the three keys to the game. Run the ball to control the clock. Defensive guys, do your job and don't play outside of what you're supposed to do. And then try to get some turnovers. Uh, you got to at least be positive on the turnovers. So that comes back then to Jalen and the offense as well. Um. Now, as far as our official pick, we're one and one so far on the season, and I personally do not think the Saints are as good as they have been. I think you're, you're, they played a, a terrible Carolina team. Who who knows what's going on with them? Uh, they benched uh, their quarterback. Uh, they're a mess. You have the Cowboys, who I like. I said I don't think they're as good as everybody says they are. So, uh, okay. Like the Saints, they're 2-0 to their credit. They're scoring over 40 points a game. I just don't think they're as good as they are. I think they're going to come back down to earth. Is this the week? Who knows? I also don't think the Eagles are as bad as they played last week. Uh, I think they're a better team than what they played down in Brazil as well. Um, So what does that mean? I, I think this is going to be a close game. I don't think either team is going to blow the other one out. Uh, I I just think it's going to be a close game. And with a spread of three, I think that is the perfect spread. I think this is a three-point game. But I can't pick the Eagles. I cannot pick the Eagles until the defense shows me that that last drive was more of an anomaly than the norm. Uh, So I also cannot pick the Saints because I do think this is going to be a close game. Um, I I know it's kind of a cop-out, but I'm not picking either team. Uh, I, I don't know what to expect from the Eagles. Uh, could the Saints blow the Eagles out? Absolutely. Could the Eagles blow the Saints out? Absolutely. I, I just don't know which way this is going to go. That is a, a good line. I think it's going to be a close game. But I'm looking at this total. I'm kind of surprised that it's only 49.5. And, and I know you don't get a ton of games uh, over-unders that are higher than this in the NFL. I still think this is low. I think there's going to be some points on the board. I see like a 31-28, somewhere in that range game. Both teams might score 30 points. 
I'm going with the over as the official play. So we're going over 49 and a half for the Eagles Saints official play. Uh, can the Eagles win? Sure. I, I told you what they need to do. Can the Saints blow the Eagles out? Absolutely. But I, I just think that you had a week now to game plan with knowing that A.J. is not going to play. And I think that's going to be the key to this offense. I look for the Eagles offense to be in sync. I look for them to pound the rock and I, I, I impose their will on the Saints defense. Whether or not we can stop the Saints, that's going to be the key to the game. The Eagles are going to put up points. Can they stop the Saints? That's why I'm going with the over because I'm not sure we can stop the Saints. Let me know your thoughts, though. 267-495-8531. Give me your thoughts and predictions on this game. The Back to the Future voice and text line is wide open right now. I'll be checking it throughout the day. Give me your picks. Let me know your thoughts. What do you think of the keys to the game? And if you're a representative from KeyBank, hit me up because it's a great sponsorship. I can get a little production music and ding, 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 show a picture of a key with your logo. Just saying. Uh, but let me know your thoughts. We're going over 49 and a half. Hopefully we get back into the black instead of being in the red right now for our official bets. But call the Back to the Future voice and text line. Let me know your thoughts at 267 495 8531. All right, Mishkoff makes his hopefully preseason debut today down in Washington. That game is at 3 30. I don't think it's on TV unless you have Fubu uh, or Fubo. And honestly, I don't even know what that is. I think it's a pay service. Um, and yes, that makes me sound like a, a, an old man. I remember my dad. But I don't know. I have no idea what Fubo is. So you, if you can let me know what Fubo is, maybe I can try to watch some of this game. Union also have a huge game tonight. 615 down in Chester. They're taking on DC United, who they're currently tied with in the standings. So this is a huge game as they're trying to make a playoff push and get into firmly into the playoff picture and get out of that wild card. Get up to that seven seed. Uh, but huge game tonight for the Union. All right. Going to do a little bit of fills today. And today we're going to go back to 2008. And hopefully this is what's going to bring the Phillies some luck and magic today up in New York. But on this day, the Phillies beat the Braves 6-2 to two down at Citizens Bank Park. Shane Victorino went 3-4 for four with a triple and a run score. Pat Burrell hit a three-run homer. And that home run was the Phillies was the 18th straight game that the Phillies had hit a home run. Uh, which was a, and still is a team record. Uh, it was their 10th win in their last 11 games. But, I mean, they just got on a hot streak. And uh, they ended up hitting 26 total home runs during that 18-game streak. It started on September 3rd. And when it started, the Phillies were three games back. After this win against the Braves, the 18th straight game with a home run, they were up two and a half. They ended up winning the division by three games, and we all know how magical that season ended. But on this day in 2008, Phillies beat the Braves 6-2. to two. Pat Burrell with a three-run shot, which was the 18th straight game that the Phillies had hit a home run in, which was a team record. Unfortunately, the streak did end the next night against Atlanta, but when it was all said and done, 26 total home runs. Phillies went from being three games back to up two and a half. And that streak and that stretch in October, or I'm sorry, September, where they won 10 out of 11 games, really propelled them to the division. And they got hot. And we all know how that season ended. Love to see this season end that way. But that happened on this day in 2008. All right, today, in honor of the Flyers kicking off the preseason slate we're gonna go with our philly sports villain and today it's chris gratton and this was a whole crazy saga and the backstory is the flyers that bobby clark always loved him and was trying to draft him flyers at the time didn't necessarily have a need for a center this was around uh, the 1997 offseason and they attempted to sign him as a restricted free agent Knowing and they front loaded it, knowing that Tampa Bay didn't have the resources or the funds to match it. Well, the the Tampa Bay GM was like, no, 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 Bobby, I'm gonna outsmart you here, um, and then pulled the. I couldn't read the facts. And kids back in the day, before email, before all of this official stuff, docs to sign, 
and all this fancy digital stuff we had, you used to have to put a piece of paper through basically what was a printer, dial a number, and hit send. So it, it made sense. Sometimes they came out not very legible, but the Tampa Bay GM thought he had pulled a fast one over on the Flyers and traded Chris Gratton to the Chicago Blackhawks. Bobby Clark was like, that's ridiculous. I have the, the, they used to send you a receipt. He was like, I have the fax receipt that says, not only did I send it, it was delivered. What do you mean you can't read it? Like, that's, get put new ink in your fax machine. Uh, did go to arbitration. The NHL did rule that the Flyers deal was good and Tampa Bay was on the clock to try to match the offer sheet if they wanted to keep Chris Gratton. Now, I know it sounds crazy, but this is not the first time, and I think there was a couple other times too where the Flyers had issues with faxes. We just talked about T.O. His agent forgot to fax the, the sheet. So luckily we're in a better place right now digitally where we can do this. Uh, but Ed Snyder went to Bobby Clark and said, yo, make this right, fix it, and let's just move on because Ed Snyder hated the bad publicity and all that stuff. So Bobby Clark did go and say, all right, I'll give you four first-round picks um, in, in exchange for Chris Gratton, in which Tampa Bay said fine and gave those picks right back to the Flyers for Mikkel Renberg and Carl Dykhouse. Why he, Why Bobby Clark just didn't say, hey, I'll give you Carl Dykhouse and Mikkel Renberg for the uh, Chris Gratton? I don't know. I, I mean, but some of the the rules with contracts and Bobby Clark just did some crazy shit like that half the time anyway. Uh, but all of this, this is not why Gratton is the, you might think, I thought Chris Gratton was the Philly sports villain and you can make the case that it's Bobby Clark here, but no, it gets better. He was solid in his first season, but then he, he struggled after his first season going into that second season, disappeared in big spots and big games and this was a team that was coming off of being in the Stanley Cup final. So the, they had Lindros, they had LeClaire, uh, Brindamore. Like they had guys and the expectations were high and Chris Gratton just could not live up to the spotlight in Philly, I guess. Um, he had his moments, but for the most part, it was a huge disappointment. And I think a lot of people at the time, including myself, uh, I was upset because they broke up the Legion of Doom. They got rid of Mikel Renberg in order for, to bring in Chris Gratton, who they didn't need a center. Uh, and it just was all downhill for the Flyers from there. Ultimately, Chris Gratton was traded back to Tampa Bay the next season. And this, like I said, was more on probably Bobby Clark. But Chris Gratton certainly didn't help himself and didn't play well. And, of course, he went once he went back to Tampa and ex resumed his career there, he was solid. I mean, he was a solid NHL player. However... Flyers fans, I, I say it all the time, and I mean this in the most endearing way possible, they're a different breed. And if you're not living up, especially for a team that was coming off of a Stanley Cup, you're going to be a villain, uh, especially when you break up the Legion of Doom. So Chris Gratton is today's Philly sports villain. Uh, you could certainly make the argument to Bobby Clark, but that would be, I could do a whole two-week series on Bobby Clark being a Philly villain. But maybe we'll do that at a later date. Chris Gratton, today's Philly sports villain. Union in action tonight. Flyers kick off the preseason this afternoon. On this day back in 2008, Phils beat the Braves 6-2. Pat Burrell hit a three-run shot, which was the 18th straight game. The Phillies had hit a home run, which was a team record. And during that streak, pretty much put away the division. Uh, so hopefully that translates how many ever years later now and the Phillies can close out the division up in New York and stick it to the Metropolitans. I saw somebody put that on Twitter that uh, their mom calls them the Metropolitans, which is their government name. And I kind of like that. The Metropolitans instead of calling them the Mutts. So let's go, Phils. Beat the Metropolitans today and bring home the first division since 2011. Be sure to let me know what your thoughts are on the Eagles game. I'm not confident. I think we're going to see some points, but I'm not confident in a win. Maybe you can talk me into it. 267-495-8531. That'll get you in. But the official bet, we're going over 49 and a half. I think we're going to see uh, an offensive slugfest in this game. Uh, kudos to my Temple Owls for winning. 
I mentioned the division. Be sure to get anything else Philly sports related off of your chest. Get your Eagles picks in on the Back to the Future voice and text line 267 495 8531. This has been This Day in Philly Sports History for September 22nd, 2024. My name is Jim Montgomery, and hopefully this brings a little bit of luck, but we're going to go a little different for the sign-off. Go have yourselves a Sunday, a good first day of fall, and until next time, go Phils.